Hey guys, welcome to another C++ tutorial. Now, if you guys remember, in the last tutorial, we have just installed and downloaded code blocks, and we are using it, and we have also test ran these lines of code. So, in this tutorial, I will explain what this code means. So, just stay tuned. So, this is the minimum C++ program. So, this is the minimum requirement for a C++ program to run. So let's start from the first line. In the first line, we have written something called hash include IO stream inside greater than or less than science. So what does that mean? Now, whenever you see a hash, you will understand that these things are called preprocessor directives. Preprocessor directives are placed uh, at the first lines of code. So include is also a special type of preprocessor directive so whenever we say include and write something it basically means go to that library or here it means io stream library io stream basically means input output stream so it says that from the input output stream library include everything in this program so that we can uh, reuse those codes which has been written for us in the standard library so that is why you have to include that and if we don't include that you just delete that and test it and you will get an error that C out was not declared in scope and endl was not declared in the scope so just go ahead and write it and in the next line we have something called using namespace std now C++ has a concept of namespace so everyone keeps their codes inside some namespaces so there's no clash between different kind of names so all the codes that have been put in standard library are put inside the std namespace std basically means standard so if you want to use those codes which are put inside the standard library we have to we have to write this line using namespace std if we go and delete that uh, you will can see that we have some errors here okay so if we don't want to get those we have to we have to put those put the using namespace std here or we can also do it we have to explicitly say std whenever we use something from that namespace so we have to put std colon colon here and we have to also put std colon colon here now if you go and run it it will see that it will it runs but we don't want to do that we just love to be simple so we'll go here and write using namespace std and we'll be good to go so let's come to the next line. Next line it says int main. Now what the heck is this main? Now let me say you that main is the most important thing in any C++ program. Now whatever you write, whatever you do, the C++ program execution starts from main. So all of your program just starts executing from this main function and this is called a function. Okay. So if you don't have a main, it will not execute. Let's change the name. If we change the name to non-main or anything and run it, as you guys can see, it gives some exception and it will not run because main is the starting part of every program. So you have to have a main function in each and every C++ program. So now, how do you understand that this is a function? You understand that this is a function by seeing these opening and closing brackets. Now, whenever you see this pair of parentheses, you will understand that this is a function. And this int in front of main basically means an integer. So the function main will return an integer. So we'll put something in and we'll get back our integer. Now, this is the line which just prints this hello world. We're not going to discuss it here. We'll discuss it in the next lesson. And the final line returns zero. As we have said that we want the main to return an integer, so if we really want to return something, we have to return 0, or we can return also 1, 2, or 3. But 0 is basically return for normal execution. Now, one more thing. All of you guys are seeing that in the last lines, in the, in the last of each and every statement, you are seeing a semicolon. Now, these things are very, very important. In C++, all the statements are terminated using semicolons. And if you don't use semicolons, uh, you are in a big trouble. Let's remove some of one of them and just run it. As you can see, it gives an error, expected semicolon before return. So if you, uh, you just give that and run it, and it will again run. So 
that was for this tutorial we just discussed from first to last each and every aspect of this program and i hope all of your concepts have become clear and if you have any questions just tell me those in comments i hope it helped thank you very very much for watching please subscribe and i'll see you in the next video please thank you